great job. And I've always enjoyed listening to Wiles. I think he's one of the smartest guys I've, I've ever heard. He's had one of the things uh, that I believe in is that teachers teach ideas and coaches teach habits. Um, and I don't think that football uh, and offensive line in particular is is uh, a, a very, uh, you know, uh, totally foreign thing to, to good athletes. Uh, but I do, I do think there are some fundamental things that a good athlete or an athletic looking guy is going to do. Okay. And these fundamentals uh, are pretty much the way the human body works. The human body, <laughs> to me, we're two legged animals. Okay. We have a, a, an ability to change our shape so that we can mimic different types of machines okay we can, you know we can act like uh, bulldozers we can act like motorcycles we can't do much with airplanes uh, but we can change our shape well how do we do that well we bend our arms and legs okay and what we're what we talk about when we bend our arms and legs and i don't know if you guys can see me can you see me can you can you guys see me yeah yeah, okay. Got top corner. Okay, our uh, everything we do in the human body is uh, uh, all the forces that we produce are are the result of torque. Torque is is uh, made it's force in a circle, and it's made with levers. Okay, and we all talk about leverage. You know, leverage is advantage. Okay, but what we do, uh, we. Okay, if we want if we want to go and play with long arms or long legs, we we exchange length for strength and vice versa. So a long arm, the muscle stays the same. Okay, the length of the arm is a long lever, and it's the output lever. That's just the way we. I don't want to get into physics too much, but but uh, let's say my arm is my output lever. I can lift so much weight. And the length of that arm is going to affect the, the amount of weight that I can exert torque on. And notice my hand travels in a circle because my, that's the way my joint works. Okay. If I shorten my arm, okay, I obviously lose length, but I gain strength. Okay. The muscles haven't changed. I've just shortened the output lever. Okay. And, it, you know, everybody used to call this gator, you know, alligator arms, alligator. Well, for a while there, for a while there, I called it uh, hooks, and I called it uh, before that. Wiles brought it up triangles. Okay, but if you look, this isn't really a triangle. A triangle has three sides. This is a two-sided object. Okay, close to a hook. Effectively made my arm from hand, my hand to my shoulder. I made it short, shorter. Okay, longer, shorter, longer. Okay. I can cover more distance with the same amount of, of contraction. Shorter, I can move more weight with the same amount of contraction. The muscles don't care. It's, it's the length of the arm. Now, what we try to do, okay, I think that sport, and as a matter of fact, anything that, that humans do, uh, it's about acceleration. And acceleration is simply this, change in speed or direction. Okay, we, we don't play full speed, we play full throttle. We don't play in fourth gear, we play in second gear, first gear, okay, uh, for all you gearheads out there. So what we developed was a, a, a group of things that are fundamental to acceleration, okay? And what, what that is, is it's just a, a group of how I to do every day, like everybody else does. And a lot of this stuff was designed to be done in the off season. Okay, now, of course, in college football, it's hard to do anything in the off season without, you know, some lady from compliance coming down and complaining about it. But, uh, you know, that that was the thought process behind it. But if, if you look at these guys right now, I used to call it, a, you know, dragging the tail. Some guys say, you know, squat position, whatever. Uh, to me, they're condensed. Okay, their arms are bent, their knees are bent, their ankles are flexed, their hips are bent, they're condensed. They are close together. Okay. 
condensing your body, accelerate faster. Okay, you know, a, an ice skater, a, a, we were talking about this the other day, she starts to spin and she's got her arms stuck out. And as she pulls her arms in, she's condensing herself onto an axis and she's speeding up. But when you play condensed, you're going to accelerate easier. Um, uh, Ledford down there at Louisville gave a talk and he talked about lowering yourself. Every time you lower yourself an inch, it's like your opponent is facing 10 more pounds. Okay. Uh, Cause you're condensing yourself, you know, a pound. The feathers uh, with the lead, but it's awful hard to accelerate a pound of feathers because it flops all over the place. It flails. A pound of lead, you just grab it and throw it. Okay. What, what we said was, well, I'm going to reduce myself. I'm going to condense myself into a tighter package. And not only will it be more difficult for that opponent to move me because I'm a smaller lever, but my levers are going to be smaller. It's going to be easier for me to move, for me to accelerate. Now, I want to go back to that for a second. When I'm standing straight up, okay, my opponent sees me as a lever. Okay, if I'm trying to move a refrigerator all by myself and I, I can't lift it up, it's 300 pounds, I can't push it because it's dragging on the, on the carpet, it's dragging on the linoleum. Some of you guys probably have marble, I don't know. Wiles probably got marble. Okay, well, if I take that thing and I tilt it to one corner and then to the other corner and then back again, I can walk it across the room. It hasn't changed the weight any, okay, but I'm using it the structure of that refrigerator as a lever. I can do the same thing to a, to a player to an extent, okay? But what I want to do is develop these habits of, of three things, okay? I'm gonna make sure we're moving. Number one, we want traction. So if you notice, our toes are pointed out. We're, we're not toes straight ahead. The reason for that is it's easier to uh, to uh, overcome uh, uh, plantar flexion, okay. When when I'm all taped up, I got I got uh, ankle wraps, tape, high tight top shoes, and everything. My and my ankles don't bend very much. If I'm in a gym, uh, you know, I I'm, heck, I'm almost barefoot. I can do all kinds of things, knees in all that. Also, uh, when I'm on a sloppy surface and I don't have all my cleats in the ground, I'm going to slip. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is be able to use the, the resistance of the field to develop force. And let me tell you this, force, even though I said force, uh, everything we, we develop is, is torque, force is travel in a straight line unless another force affects them. Okay, so when I'm torquing like this, okay, I'm, I'm traveling in a circle. When I'm bench pressing, I'm using two different torques coordinated to make a straight line. In order for me to make straight line force as a human being, I've got to coordinate different joints together, okay? But right now, all we want to do, this is pre-contact, we want to be able to accelerate. We want to be able to change direction and change speed. Get there quickly, okay? Stop, start, back up, do whatever I have, we have to do, okay? We also know that keeping the elbows bent okay, is your hands, okay, if you're a sprinter, you're told to keep your elbow bent, and you're going from your hip pocket to your lip, and you're hammering that arm, you are not straightening that elbow, okay, when you straighten the elbow, you slow your hands down, when you slow your hands down, your hands are tied to your feet, okay, now we learn, a, we learn something, something called uncoupling, where we, where we uncouple our hands from our feet, but that's, that's, two things down okay what we're trying to do here is stay condensed some you know I, I for a while there i was saying drag your tail keep your hips low and all that but what it really comes down to is shorten your levers shorten your levers okay the second thing the first thing is traction the second thing is condensed the third thing is protecting your chest okay now let's go back to the idea that i am also a lever and my opponent can use me to his advantage. The, the, the best place he can hit me, the place that will affect me the most is in my chest. Okay. So what we started out with a concept of 
what do you call a boxer who boxes like this? Uh, he's knocked out, coach. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we wanted to learn how to keep our hands, control our hands, and keep from flailing. Okay, keep from doing this stuff. We wanted to, sometimes we wanted to do it, but when we didn't want to do it, when we wanted to protect our chest, we wanted to keep our hands calm. Okay, so we started out with the tennis balls, rolling the meatballs. Okay, that gave us a little articulation, and it was also uh, uh, not passive learning; it was active learning. In order to keep that that tennis ball between our hands, we had to actively keep our hands close together. So what we're doing here is we're we're working on footwork, but we're really working on those three fundamentals: traction, slamming your feet in the ground, okay, being condensed, keeping your elbows and knees bent, okay. And sometimes we straighten our arms, depends on what we're trying to work on. And the third thing is keeping our hands in front of us, keeping our dukes up. So let's just run a couple of these things and we'll take a look at them. Okay. All right. So all we're doing here is we're just trying to accelerate. We're trying to stay condensed. Okay. And the footwork doesn't really matter what you use. I just happen to use some of these, these types of footwork. Everything we do, okay, we're trying to slam our feet into the ground. We're trying to maximize uh, uh, contact with the ground for traction, and we're trying to stay condensed. Now, here we're taking one hand and we're protecting ourselves. We call this an arc. Okay, we don't want the guy that's on us to hit us, so we're using one hand to protect ourselves. You notice that we pretty much look all, except for those guys in the back who are freshmen and, and some walk on types. Actually, three of these frontline guys were walk ons. Okay, but all we're trying to do is maintain that those three fundamentals. Okay, here's us going the other way. Okay, I was always kind of proud of watching these things because everybody kind of looks the same. Okay, and I got this, I, I might as well say this now, I got this from Wiley, the, um, from Coach Wiley, the idea of the chorus line. What he told me was, Coach, your, your most important guys up front, the next guys, the next most important are, are the second line and the third line is uh, the guys that, that are, you know, fledgling and you, you got to watch them, but not as much as those first line guys. But what we do here is so efficient everybody's doing the same thing and the worst guys are watching the best guys now every once in a while i'll take the second group and put, move them in the front okay but that, they're basically learning from each other and i'm getting a lot of reps okay and, and again like like i'm saying this is these are non-contact drills so here we go right so we're always here's a skip step this this stuff uh, we we started doing this in 2010 at elon and it was it was instant success, uh, and of course, as as it went, we as I got to the highest level, I got I got earaches about it. But um, it works pretty good. But the idea is to stay square, and I'm going to cover the same amount or more ground on two steps than I than you are on three. Okay. Now, prior to this one, the, the arc step. That was these two are antithesis, but this thing is is uh, it's been very handy. Uh, you you know you can you can cover quite a bit of ground with it. Okay, um, there it goes the other way. And again, notice what we're doing. The guy in the middle, sixty two, is probably the best football player I've ever coached. Uh, there was a guy at Elon that that approached him that was bigger and played played in the pros. This guy was magic. Okay. And uh, another uh, an anecdotal uh, or side effect of those meatballs. And right now, we're not using the meatballs because I, I got tired of it. You'll see 66, see his hands spread. See this guy 66 right here? That's what we don't want. Okay. It's not that it, he's going to get messed up in this particular footwork. But we're, we're working to try and keep the hands together. We're, we're trying to uncouple our hands from our feet. Okay, so we can keep our dukes up at all times so that we can feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay, well, none of this stuff is natural. Okay, but I do know this, the good athletes doing no matter what they do, control their hands and stay condensed. All right, unless they're sprinters, then they want to uncondense, they want length. Okay, but anyway, there we go. Uh, 
like I said, we're not, we weren't using the meatballs at the time. I just got tired of chasing them. And this was towards the end of my stay there. Okay. And various steps. I don't know why this thing's doing this. Okay. What we're trying to do there, we're, we're trying to gallop. Okay. Now let me, let me, let me tell you about gallop. I might as well say it to you. When you're going over the trail leg, Okay, Jim, Jim McNally says the high leg, the low leg. Okay, I say the lead leg and the trail leg. Okay, uh, when you have the, and I'm going to use his thing, when, 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 I have, when I'm moving to my left, okay, and my high leg is the right leg, I call that gallop. So if you hear me say that, okay, uh, that's what I mean. I'm galloping away from from a guy towards the line. When I take, when I'm going to the left and my left leg is the high leg, I call that a cow tip. Okay, and you'll see that on the drills. It, are, are, what's the difference? There is a difference, okay. Uh, one, I'm trying to escape. The other one, I'm trying to stay as condensed as possible and I'm gonna make, I'm, I'm counting on making a collision against a down lineman. So, that was always like that. Jim took it and, and, and turned everything into gallops, which is fine. I just want to make sure that if I say it, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. These are just shuffles. Okay. And like I said, now, this is something that we didn't really get into the other day when we were talking. There's a thing called synchronized diagonal uh, contraction. And what that means is this. Your body... If you, if you look at divided in a bunch of different ways, there's, you know, kinetic chains and what have you. But if you look at your torso, okay, you've got your, your front chest, your back, your, your, excuse me, your front chest, two sides, and your back, two sides, two lats, two pecs, deltoids, et cetera, and so on. Okay. Most people will tell you that your force comes from your hips when you're doing rotational things. And this is, this is part of our rotational uh, again, uh, circular force thing. But what we found was this. Uh, if we pulled back, if I'm going to hit something with my right hand and I pull back as hard as I could with my left shoulder, okay, I'm condensing that left arm and I'm, I'm utilizing the front of my right arm, the right, uh, front, the front right of my body and the re left rear of my body. I am actually doubling the force as opposed to just using my hand. Okay. So I am, I'm not really using my arms as much as I'm using my shoulder yoke. And this is a different type of lever. This is a seesaw. Okay. Your shoulders pivot on an axis, your backbone. And when you pull that shoulder back, that shoulder will go forward. If you're actively pulling back with that giant lap muscle, you're going to have a lot more punch. Plus, you're using your pec and abdominals in the front. Plus, you're, you're what we call co-contracted in the legs. You are using somewhat of your hips, but really, what you've done is you've locked this up, and you're using the your, the kinetic chain is being transferred to the hips through the lats and the pecs, right? And and believe. I was an English guy in college. I, the only, I learned this stuff from watching players just like uh, everybody else does and also working on cars and things like that, uh, motorcycles, uh, you know, tools or levers. But anyway, what, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to jam and we're violently trying to pull the shoulder back. There it is. There's a shot right there. Okay. This kid was pretty powerful. You can see the elbow come back. Okay. Now we're doing exactly the same thing, but what we're doing, okay, there's just little jabs. There's a hard punch, okay, little jab, hard punch. And this is a hook. Now, I want you to think of Mike Tyson. Would you say that he's a long, lengthy athlete, lanky? No, he's condensed. And if you can get uh, the video of him sparring right now at 50 years old, when he's throwing hooks, his arm, is, his shoulder is locked. His elbow is locked. That's what we call co-contraction. His bicep and his tricep lock his, his elbow, and his pec and his lat lock his shoulder. And he pulls that body, and he's hitting you with his torso. He's hitting you with 
that twisting motion of the torso. And he is transferring that force, okay, through this locked arm into that body. Not hitting with his arm. You can hit a ping pong ball with your arm. You can, you know, hit a speed bag with your arm. But when you hit that heavy bag, you don't slap it. I don't even say strike anymore. I just, I want, I want those guys to understand the kinetic chain. So the kinetic chain is part of your hip, okay, and that co-contraction uh, of the arm and the synchronized diagonal contraction of the pec and the lat, okay. You can see they're walloping these guys, okay? Now here's a, this is, this is what we call cow tipping, okay? And the, the, the interesting thing about this is, you know, we, we had a guy uh, earlier, uh, those two guys talking um, gap scheme. To us, uh, and I think Paul Alexander sort of unearthed this thing 20 years ago, uh, but I do it, I take it to the nth degree. To me, if you have a gap and not a man, it's a gap scheme, okay? It, whether it's zone, whatever your footwork is, okay? And depending on the leverage of the, uh, where the back is hitting, okay, you can use exactly the same techniques of the same stuff, okay? But in this particular thing, what we're trying to do is, is create space, okay, and stay, keep that up leg up so that we can escape in the other direction, okay? So we're escaping now. If you look at this, okay, if I'm the backside tackle, okay, in, in, in tight zone, or I'm the front side tackle in duo and I'm going to the front side spot, linebacker, I need to keep my right leg back in order to escape, okay? And there's another component here. Because I stay so nicely condensed, okay, I'm going to be using what I call avalanche or gravity, okay? Most of your force, when you're moving around as a two-legged animal, is to overcome gravity, okay? Most of your opponent's force is, is just staying on his feet, trying to overcome gravity. Whatever force you can generate beyond that, okay, is going to make changes, but you have to stay on your feet. But what we try to do as we as we go, we try to condense so that we use, it's almost like a fulcrum idea. On that right leg, we're using that as, as, as the fulcrum and we are, it's essentially lunging over that left leg and doing what we kind of call a, a front wheel drive, okay? And we're trying to get as condensed as we can because we know that we'll affect our, our opponent the most, okay? and he'll affect us the least if we can stay condensed. Also, we're trying to lock our elbows and use our legs, not our arms, our legs. We're trying to contract, co-contract our arms and use our legs, okay, to move this guy. Our arms are just like spears, okay? Now they're not hooks and now we want length, okay? Well, because we're not using them as levers, okay, we're using them as spears, the length doesn't hurt us. It doesn't affect us any, okay? You can see this guy 69. He's 305 pounds, okay? And there's an example of him not being uh, uh, condensed, and this guy takes him right off the ground, okay? Both of these, these kids, everybody in this film is 300 pounds right here, 310, 320, whatever, okay? That guy's 69, bench press 550. I saw him do it, okay? But anyway, they're escaping, and, uh, and you know we're using the med balls because it's a small part of it. Again, it makes us control our hands. Now, 75 and 70 raise up a little bit. Okay, you can see it. So they have to recondense. 75 really doesn't recondense, does he? Now watch what happens. He gets stalled. See it? Because he's it's too much for his muscles to overcome the length of his levers. Okay, he's got to get the weight down on that front leg. Okay, and he's got to get those arms out. And he's got, you see, he's collapsing. Okay, he stalls. He doesn't really change this guy. Okay, the way he should. He's up in the air. Okay, and he comes off with a good guy, uh, you know, a, a good uh, uh, shuffle. Okay, right. Okay, this guy's got his elbow. A lot of bent. He's very strong. 
okay? And he gets away with, with being so strong, okay? But I'd like to see his elbows, I'd like to see his arms a little straighter, okay? I think he's okay condensed-wise. This kid played, he started two games for me, got a tryout. And he, he's a, a pit man in a, in a NASCAR crew right now, making a lot of money, kind of making six figures. He's laughing at me. But he was, he just stayed with it. You know, uh, he, he wasn't comfortable being uncomfortable. And he, I just kept talking to him about it. And one of the things that Wiles said a number of times in the moment, the moment, we don't talk about anything but what we're doing right now. I learned that from Wiley. This play, this day, this week, this month, whatever the focus is, that's what we're focusing on. We don't care about the, the last play. We don't care about the play after this one. We don't, all we care about is this play. All we care about is this drill. And that's what we talk about that every day. Okay. And we, and toughness to us is a very simple definition. Toughness is the ability to perform no matter how you feel. Okay. So toughness to us is just consistency of performance, regardless of our physical or mental well being. Okay. That's what we're looking for. We constantly talk about toughness. Okay. Do it. What, what, what did, uh, what did he say? Do it, do the right thing. Right. Okay. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to do the right thing, the way it's supposed to be done, the disciplined way we're doing what we do so that we can work together. Okay. In order to do what has to be done. Okay. And I don't, you know, I'm not, like the three inches to the right, six inches to the left, that type of thing. When we do these drills, though, these fundamentals, I try to focus on that, those three fundamentals, okay? Control your hands to protect your chest, condense, and get your traction. Those three I harp on constantly. I think if you can math, master those three things, you can play football at any position except quarterback, okay? Uh, when I coached tight ends at Penn State, we used the exact same things to run routes. I didn't want to see anybody running routes tall. I didn't want anybody flailing their arms and getting hit in the chest. I wanted them to, to, to control. When they ran that stick route, I want them to stick the opponent with their with their arm and their flipper and not get stuck. Okay. And I want traction, flat feet on the ground. I wanted acceleration. I what's the difference? If if you run a four seven and your guy that's matching you runs a four seven, who's gonna win the race? The guy that accelerates better. Okay. So acceleration is a big word for us. Okay, this is this was something that I hadn't done since the Elon days. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to co-contract our shoulders and elbows and and to an extent our knees and just work our hips. Now we're not I'm not telling these guys to arch the back or anything. I don't you, you, I don't see you, the knees never straighten. All I'm trying to do is transfer everything to the hips, to the hips. Okay, and in order to do that, okay, obviously I can't can, I can't curl as much as I can leg press. If my arms aren't locked, I can't transfer enough down the kinetic chain to the big muscles in the hips. So that's all this is. I didn't do a lot of this at Ball State, but I was just fooling around with it. Okay, we're flipping this thing up, and you can see uh, the 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 reason we use the medicine balls is number one, they're small target. Number two. You can make them, you can mold them to your body so that there's a load there. 78 feels the 300 pounds that 69 has. It's not like he's hitting the shield and the shield is going up in the air. Okay. He, he feels that weight. Okay. That's why we did it. And if, if he doesn't keep his elbows locked and bent, and if he doesn't keep his knees locked and bent, he's going to have a problem moving this guy. Okay. Okay. This guy does a pretty good job. This this kid was a shot putter and a wrestler. Now, now, right there, no good. See how he lengthens his arms? Watch this. Okay. Right there. Right there. Okay. He's given up strength for length. Okay. And he's not going to be as strong. Now he kept now he kept it nice and strong. He kept it short and tight. Now there's a problem with this. You know, you know, the defender is not going to let you hit him in the chest like this. But we'll we'll advance to that as we go. Okay. 
these drills are all nice and stuff, you know, but really what we're trying to do, this guy's doing the same thing with his arms. Okay. He's, he's rolling his, I don't, I don't talk about knees forward because you see what happens when you talk about knees forward, watch your he heels come off the ground. He's losing traction. Okay. See it. Okay. I don't want that. I, I want him to, to, to have the knees go out, not forward. Okay. Just like he's squatting. Right. And he's, he's getting, there he goes. He kept the, he kept the lock. Right. And to me, he's straightening out his, his, um, his knees a little bit too much. Okay. But he's got a good hook. He's got the hooks, the short arms. Okay. Hey, tell me uh, if, if you want, if you want me to stop. All right. Just when I, if I ran out of time. No, okay. you're good. This, this guy, this guy will wallop you, man. He turned out to be one of the best players I had. He only started two games his whole career. Okay, there's a little bit too much length. He's reaching now. Never reached a strike. Okay. And he's standing up a little bit. Okay. But he's keeping those arms locked. And that's what we're looking for. Okay. Dude, this guy's all over the place. Let's just go. Let's go to the next one. He's this good kid, walk on, great kid. This is Vince, good guy, younger, wound up playing. He's he's swinging his arms. I I don't I don't like this. Okay, I don't like this. Okay, and I'm probably telling him too. Okay, this is what we started doing. This the the biggest. This is scooting, by the way. And if you're if you use scoot footwork. Okay, if you're one of these guys that likes scoot footwork, <clears throat> never do it on air. Always hit somebody. But if you can look and see, he's got his haste, okay, his right hand place. But we started reason. The reason for scooting was how do you get in front of a guy? How do you cover a guy? Okay, and to us, cover meant to, to get on his far number, okay, get in front of him, get him, in, uh, get our feet in front of him. Okay, and get our headgear uh, past his, get our stripe past his stripe. That's cover. Okay, and we we started to use we started to use what we call mixed hands. Okay, so instead of keeping our okay, like we're holding the meatballs, we started to use that extended hand, and then we would bring them together afterwards. Okay, and it worked pretty good. I, I liked it. Uh, what we you know, and I, I went around and around and around with Jim with this. And um, to me, if if the defender comes right at him and he's got a long arm, it's very easy for him to shorten that arm up. Okay, in other words, if he's stretching that arm, that what we call a stop sign, okay, if he's stretching that stop sign out and the defender attacks him, okay, then he can very easily get into the, the, the strong position with both hands. No problem, okay? If the defender tries to run away from him, it doesn't matter. He's going to throw that guy. He's going to tear him anyway. If the defender comes straight ahead, okay, violently, he's got a little bit of nudge on him. He's got a little something on him to slow him down and kind of pull himself in front, okay? And then he can apply the strong arm or the trailing arm, okay? Scooting, by the way, is two bucket steps, Okay, let's see. You can see that that green and red. Uh, let's see if this guy's any good at this. Okay. Okay, his second step, he's gaining. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't mind this when, it, when, he, when he and the defender as passive, which I would say this defender is passive. Why, why, take another, uh, why take another scoot step when you can just go get him? All right, if you can get in front of him, who cares? Right. And we learned that, you know, over the years, uh, you know, if you scooted, if you, if you took two bucket steps uh, with both feet, OK, you you might be uh, you might be too far behind. Now, this is what he's doing here is he's matching. He's not trying to cover. He's just trying to get the man between his feet. OK, that's all he's trying to do. He's got leverage. Now he's going to scoot. OK, you can see the the. Uh, okay. The stop sign, he puts it out, and then he, he gets the big, 
the big wallop with the strong arm. Okay, this I like this a lot better. Okay, he's still gaining, but some of that is with is the defender not coming across. Okay, freshman defender, and now he's uh, now we're just we're just uh, doing basic flipping. Okay, here's Jake. Pretty good player. He's better with his footwork, but I, I still think the, the defender is screwing him. Okay. He's not gaining with that second step. He's gaining with the third. And he's making sure that he's getting in front of this guy. Okay. He's making sure that his feet are in front of his feet. I'd like to see his stripe. I'd like to see his head go past the stripe a little bit more. Okay. Now he's matching. We don't want when we match, we don't want to cross the stripes. We want to keep the stripe inside. Okay. Or backside. Right. We don't want to get beat inside. Uh, you know, uh, those guys were talking about the inside zone and, and the uh, the tackle being one on one. Well, you know, me as the wise guy, the first thing I want to say to them is, well, what happens if the end rocks? You know, uh, so this this thought process here was when you don't have as much help as you'd like to have, uh, you are going to keep the stripe inside. Okay. We don't scoot there. We just we just go. Now here he's trying to scoot. I I still don't like his. I still don't like. Uh, I I'd, I'd rather see his head go past, the stripe go past. Okay. And now he's going to match. Boom. All right. And again, I'm not going to sit there and go, hey, you know, three inches here, square foot of whatever. I just want to see. I want to see these fundamentals that we talk about. I want to see my hands protecting my chest. I want to see my body condensed. I want to see my arms and legs condensed. And I want to see traction on the ground. I want to see the toes out. We don't put our knees. Now, this is something that I think some guys, they hear me talk and they say, oh, he wants his knees out. No, I want your knees over your toes. Okay. I don't want, to, I don't want them outside. I don't want your knees outside of your toes. I don't want your toes straight ahead. I don't want your knees way inside your feet. Okay. And whatever that is, that's what it is. Okay. And that's it. Right. Now this is gallop. This is to me gallop or galloping to a linebacker. He's going to try and keep his right foot a little deeper because the, the thought process was this. Number one, he may be getting ridden on his left shoulder. So he wants to have a brace. Okay. He would have a brace on the right. He'd keep the weight on his left foot. But being as he's not being ridden, he wants to keep that gallop. He wants to be able to escape to his right very quickly, okay, because that's the, that's his gap to the right. And if the man goes to his left, he's just going to shut it down, and he's going to do, we'll do what we call rewind, and either rewind back to, to the next uh, down line, in other words, here. Okay, If this guy were to do that, if he were to take off this way, he would just shut it down and rewind and help seal that off without turning, okay? And if that guy went back door like that, he would he would do the same thing, okay? If this man went straight ahead, no problem. If this guy goes this way, he's got to be able to get on his horse and go. And if, he, if there's a defender here and that leg is up, he's trapped. So if he can keep that leg back, he can snowplow this defender, move him this way and create a bigger hole, make the linebacker come back to him, okay? So we gallop away from guys to the linebackers, okay? And there's just, that's just, you know, if we're gonna engulf the linebackers, we, we just use the, the, the nice condensed, we think linebackers are weedies, we don't care. Okay, we don't need the long arm there, okay? We just wanna make sure the linebacker can't hit us in the chest, okay? Kind of looks nice, doesn't it? Here's here he is on the grass, okay, without the uh, without the uh, tennis balls, and you can see he's. You can watch this guy's 65. He's 340 pounds. He's six foot six. You can see how he's holding that left foot back so he can keep his hips open, okay, so he can escape to the left. And once he once he engages, yeah, okay, all bets are off. Goodbye, go get it, all right. But he wants to be able to. To, to rewind, he wants to be able to accelerate back to his right, 
if he has to, if that linebacker disappears or back gaps, we don't pierce the line of scrimmage. We work the line of scrimmage for a couple of steps for that exact reason. If the linebacker back gaps, we want to we want to rewind and wall this guy off, make the linebacker come back to us. If the linebacker front runs away, we don't want to be up the field chasing, sniffing asshole. We want to snow plow that that next defender. Okay. And you know, sometimes it, what, what I've heard is which I don't care. And there's a clock too. If we're running inside zone, this is very quick. Okay. Very, very quick. Okay. We call if it's outside zone, we shuffle. We go down the line at least two steps before we make a decision. Okay. But in, in any event, we gallop to the linebacker. Okay. Did you see how nice and calm Jake's hands are? He's rolling meatballs here, man. Okay. He's not going to get hit in the chest because he's going to protect that chest with his hands. Okay. And he's hanging. He's keeping that right leg back. Okay. And to me, that's just fundamental body movements. It's, it's, it's the habits we're teaching. Okay. Or coaching. Okay. Now this guy, he could have got on his horse a little bit quicker. Okay. And get a little more violence. But the guy he's blocking is is a big dude. I guess he, I don't know. He's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good, uh, what we call a, uh, a big tree there. Okay. The th the thing that you got to remember with um, with all of this is when you're trying to make change, when you're trying to affect change. Change means change means you're taking this guy and you're working him. Work means I'm making this guy go from one spot to another against his will, okay? When I'm trying to change him, I can't let him change me. I have to be in control of my, my hands, my feet, so that when I go to hit him, I'm in optimum leverage position with, with good, strong levers and utilizing my hips and locking out the kinetic chain. Now, if this guy's just running, I want to get up and, and run a little bit, and I want to play longer. I want to stretch and, and lock, lock out my arms and push him more, okay? But here, I, I don't want him to block me. I don't want him to change me. I don't want him – I don't want to splash off of him. I want to change him, okay? I want him to change. Okay, he didn't change it very much right there. Okay. Now, this is just stalemate stuff, okay? We, we started working this. I don't know. I, I, we were having a hard time. We had, we had no quarterback. We were having a hard time uh, winning, winning some games. Um, but, you know, I started fooling around with a lot of this stuff, uh, and we, we really got into fit drills. Uh, what I tried to explain to them was you're going to get stalemated at times. You're going to get locked out at times. Okay, what do you do? All right. Okay. And to me, you, you, you go fundamental. Watch, watch the footwork. He's stepping backwards. Why is he stepping backwards? He's stepping backwards to brace. Okay. Okay, so he can move the other foot. Okay. Okay, this guy just, I, I don't like this. He just stands up. He rolls his hips and stands up. Okay, so he's caught. This guy's okay. He's okay. Stands up. Okay, now this is this is throwing, okay? And this could be run or pass. But basically, if you are actually going to throw, if you're going to, if you're going to, uh, torque somebody actually torque them okay you have to ground both feet okay a short stop fielding a, a, a ball and and trying to peg somebody uh, on first base he can he's he let's say he's avoiding a, a, a double play he's or he's making a double play he's avoiding a runner he has to jump up in the air and throw that ball well coach he's making torque he's yeah well the ball only weighs like what eight ounces, okay? This guy weighs 300 pounds. If you don't root both feet, you can't develop any torque, 
okay? You can't do it, right? So you got to get your feet on the ground and, and root those feet. And then when you throw, you just, you can see Jake here pulling the elbow, okay? And what we're telling them to do is we're telling them to put their left hand on the man right here. And right, uh, let, me, let me see if I can get it back here. Okay. Put the left hand on the man. Is this, what is this? Is this slow forward or fast forward or what? Backwards? Okay. Starts with his right hand off and his left hand on. Okay. Now, what he's going to do is as he transfers the hands, okay, he's going to root both feet and throw. Okay. And when he does that, he pulls the elbow and shoulder, the left shoulder and elbow back. Okay. He's, this guy stands up a little bit, but it doesn't matter. He's got, he's got what we call the handle. He's got the armpit. Okay. He's got it. All right. And I don't think he does a great job of, of staying condensed as opposed to this guy who stays condensed. Okay. This this uh, this um, partner stinks. This looks like uh, this looks like uh, pro wrestling here. Yeah, he this guy stands up and actually, if you see him, he stands up. He loses his condensing sixty five and actually gets pushed backwards. He gets changed. See it? Now he does a pretty good job, but again, this drill you know it's set up for that guy to win. All, all these drills. Uh, you know, this is the perfect drill. I mean, it's just perfect. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't encounter perfect in a game. Okay? You you get you encounter it's like it's like those guys in the karate movies. You know, they're, they're ha 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 ha. Everybody, it's all choreographed. When you get into a real fight, it looks like a fight. You know, I mean, they're fighting each other, getting hit, and they're hurt. Okay, so but we are trying to develop these habits. Okay. This is something that I wish they would do in um, in uh, the uh, the um, combine when they do the mirror drill. Okay, uh, again, we're just trying to stay condensed. Okay, and we're jabbing with the hand. All right, you know, you can say, well, uh, the, he'll knock the hand down. Well, we're trying to go to the outside shoulder, the far shoulder. Okay, not down the middle. Okay, and you've heard Paul uh, Alexander say this. If you go down the middle, the guy's going to walk right around. He's going to club you. If you go, if if you go to the outside shoulder or the outside uh, pad, okay, uh, you'll hit him pretty good with the inside hand. Okay, we're not doing that yet. Okay, we're just all we're doing is we're working on on pulling the elbow back and staying condensed. Fundamentals. Okay. Okay. This is this is. Uh, I love this. Uh, what what did I do? I screwed up. What did I do, Paul? I think you just started it over. Just uh, grab the bar on the bottom and bring it all the way to the end. To you're at like the five thirty mark. Okay. And we call this the wrench, okay? And the wrench is a pretty violent uh, thing, okay? And it's, it's a pretty, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, you know, we, we like to talk about um, what happens if you get beat, okay? And what you do, If you're pass blocking, something's going to get broken down. Okay, it's just the way it is. And I think, um, what's his name there? The, the uh, old Chicago Bears coach used to talk about step throughs. Okay. Uh, you know, if the offensive lineman steps through, gets the linebacker, we got to stop the step throughs. Well, same thing with pass pro. If that man gets his foot past that, steps through, he's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. So what we do is we put the guys in a disadvantaged position, okay, where he's already halfway. Halfway to the step through, okay, right there. So their feet are next to each other, okay. He's already got the step through, 
we said, go ahead and put your hand in front and you're going to lock that elbow, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to, and everybody thinks it's, it's we're wrenching the guy. We're not. We're wrenching ourselves in front of the guy. And we're, what we're trying to do is pull ourselves back in front of this guy. If, if you add your weight to him, okay, all of a sudden he's got more load than he thought he had, okay? You just think about it. Somebody hands you a 300-pound sandbag. It's going to slow you down. So we're just trying to slow him down and add as much weight as he can and give a little ground because he's already got the step through. Give a little ground, okay, and get back in front of him. And at the same time, wrench ourselves in front of him. And then, and, and as we do that, hit him in the hip as standard operating procedure. And then, we'll, you know, slide the hand. Back back in the day, we, we, I mean, I did this everywhere. This UMass, I did it everywhere. We would slide the hand up into the throat area and dump the guy on the back. This particular guy had some video of doing that. I wouldn't let him do it to our, I wouldn't let him do it to our defense because we're usually uh, in the scrimmage, you know, we go to fight. But they do it in games and um, get away with it, especially the centers and guards. Okay, but the wrench is once you've established, once you've gotten into the fundamental position, you own the guy. Okay, it's pretty easy stuff. Okay, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand two things. Number one, not uncondense. Make yourself heavy. Number two, wrench yourself back in front of this guy. Okay. And you got to co-contract that shoulder and arm. You can't, you can't flop around with that arm. So this guy kind of loses it a little bit right here. Okay. And he doesn't have nothing. These, these two guys. This is this is a, I should have cut these out. Two schmucks. Okay. This is a, a good. This is not what you're looking for, right? Okay, they don't even start right. Look at their feet. Okay. okay. Go ahead. You might as well show your bad ones too. Okay. This is a guy that kind of uncondenses just a little bit, okay? But he's so strong, and he really is about 320 here. He's able to wrench himself in front. And once he gets in front, it's over. Okay. Both of them started. Okay. Now this is this is something that I, I started to do in at Ball State. We did it against Texas A&M. We did it against the first three teams. We rushed for like 250 against Texas A&M in their stadium. Okay. But I didn't understand it. All right. I thought it was a strike. It's not necessarily a strike. What this guy is doing is he's protecting his chest and protecting his gap against what we call a yellow light burner. Okay. So what he's trying to do is control the pace of the collision, right? So it's not staying square now. It's rolling the shoulder. I can get one shoulder lower than I can get two, right? That's 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 the whole theory behind it. And it's we we called it Mayweather actually for, for Floyd Mayweather, the Philly roll, the shoulder roll. Okay, but what he's doing is he's removing his his numbers from that defender. What's the defender going to do? Hit him in the shoulder point? What's he going to do? And now you can really develop front wheel drive. Okay. In other words, instead of the, instead, you, you're driving into that guy at an angle against the guy who's in two gap alignment. Okay. In other words, they're, they're say nose to nose. Well, now they're, now there's an angle and he doesn't have to come all the way back and make contact. He has to, come back and become a rock, right? A rock. He has to get into the fundamental position. And if that man times it to where he makes contact, it's a pretty, it's a pretty violent blow, okay? But if, if not, if the timing is off, then the man bounces off of him because he's a rock, 
Okay. And the way I try to explain it to them is like this. You know, you're at the you're at the uh, the city pool and you want to push all the girls in into the pool and to one of them you push her but you're not condensed you fall in with her she grabs you by the arm and you fall right in with her but if you learn how to condense and be the rock you can shove her and sink down and use gravity to to control your acceleration so you can put as much violence as you want to and if you don't make contact you're still in control now we finish with a little chip here i was just this is again wily uh, wily concepts do two things at once, uh, you know, try to get as much, if you can't, if you don't have enough time to do two drills, combine two drills into one. Okay, so that's, that's, this is again, this is what we call a chip, okay? All right, we, we chip that guy, and then we rewind and chip him again, okay? And in this case, the brace leg, is this leg the, the the leg furthest and the and the uh the weight bearing leg of course has to come back onto his right leg okay but you can see this guy bounce off and ping right and what he wants to do is change the defender don't let the defender change him okay these two schmucks are doing the same i i, I wish i i wish i had them right here he's driving a truck and he's like a pennsylvania dutch guy or something I wish I had him right here. I would. Oh, oh no, this is this is a different guy. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, the the whole deal with this is this: you got to be condensed. If you're not condensed, you're going to get rocked. Okay. But if you are condensed, he's going to bounce off you. Ping. Okay. And we say, build, become a rock, become a rock. Okay. Here's an end zone shot of it. Okay. This guy stands up a little bit. Again, three thirty. Okay, rolls his shoulder, comes back, boom, now he's standing up. Now, it doesn't matter because he's 330. This kid would take people right out of their shoes. We had, we played a, a team. I was only back there two years. The first year I was back, we played a team. He was killing this nose guard, killing him, okay, with this stuff. And I believe we're back to, to square one. All right, so I, how do I get off of this thing? Stop share? Exactly. Everybody's, yeah. Anybody yeah. still here? Yeah. It's just, it's just me and Polly. <laughs> All right. We, we <laughs> stop share. No, you gotta yeah, stop share. And then okay. there's a a couple questions. Okay. Um and then if anybody else has a question, you guys can unmute too. Um so the first question is uh are you having all the players skip versus scoot on the wide zone? All right, skip was skip was really to it was a backside what we call an Apache area on the wide zone. Okay, we don't want to skip, uh, and actually I would consider skipping if I was uncovered on the front side. The problem with it is you're too fast when you skip. I can get I can I can I can have a guy that's leveraged on me off, uh, off a gap. And I can skip right around them. When we want to encircle, when we want to Apache on the back side of wide zone, we skip. Okay. And and here's another thing. I stopped skipping for a while because the head coach was bugging my ass. Okay. But when you do skip, okay, after you stay square. The reason you stay square is in case anybody's chasing you and running you down or the rock in the front. Everything I do is is, is to stop rocks and, and twists and, and blitz. Okay. But if I can stay square, I stay square until I can win. Okay. Then I roll shoulder and Apache that way. If I come up, if I roll the shoulder and I come up in air, if I'm in air, I'm square. Okay. In other words, if I got nothing, I'm square because I'm looking, I'm keeping my eyes on my gap. And I'm trying to feel, okay, we call this the C side where I see and the blind side where I feel, okay? So I'm trying to stay on the C side, but if I turn to the C side, I get, I get blindsided. If I can stay square to air and see, I don't care what's going on. If that guy's coming at me, my mother said, when she taught me how to drive, she said, don't worry about what's behind you. Make sure you don't run into anybody. 
Okay. Well, I'm square to air, and here comes here comes the end loop. I got it. I, that's easy. Whatever whatever he does, I get him. Okay. But if I turn, okay, even when I I are I, I don't stay turned. I get to air. I want to be like this so I can feel the blind side, so I don't get blind side, and I. I I'll be able to rewind. And if that looper comes all the way across, I want to put the brakes on and maybe shut off the, the blind side. Okay, so that's the answer, I think. Yep, perfect. So if, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute. Yes, Coach, I'm um, just wondering that Mary Map weather move that you're, uh, when do you have your guys use it? What do you want to, you want to make sure that you have a you know, fully covered guy kind of determine or try to move that defensive guy to a specific side of yours? Or... I, I, I didn't get it. Can you say the that again? Are, the Mayweather move, when are you having them do it? When are you having them do it? You okay, Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I started out with, with this thought process in mind. We, we have a thing called uh, pace, okay? And it's, it's I, I liken it to driving. You know, I'm a motorhead, so me and Wiles, Wiles a motorhead too. If I got a green light, what do I do? I go. Well, if I'm controlling the gap and there's a guy in the gap, that's a green light. I go, okay? If I don't have anybody in front of me, we call that a red light. What do you do with a red light? You wait. You don't stop. You keep your feet moving, but you don't enter the, the intersection because you're going to get brain. Well, I'm, now I'm uncovered. Okay, I'm red light. I want to hang around a little bit, wait, see what's going on, and maybe help the guy I can't see, maybe help this guy, maybe linebacker comes at me, blooper, whatever. If I go smoking out of there, I get blindsided. Okay, but yellow light was the one that I always said this is the, the reason why coaches get paid. I got a wolf arc, and he's two gap with me. And I don't care if he's a little bit shaded or whatever. He's a threat to both gaps. Okay. I got a problem. Now, forever we stayed square. We tried this, we thought we called it skip, we called it the mini scoop, we called it a bunch of crap like that. And I, I got into the shoulder roll. I said, look, I can't control this guy. I don't I don't know what he's gonna do. He might come across, he might rock, he might loop, who knows what he's gonna do. What I'm gonna do is get to where I have to go and not vacate him. So let's say he's right in front of me. He's right in front of me. If I stay square, I got a little problem because now how do I brace it? Or what do I do? Okay. How about if I just do this? Okay. And if you go on YouTube and look for my name, it's got all this stuff on it. How about if I go like this and take away his target? He's got a problem now. You ever see these some bitches hit the sled, these defensive linemen? They, they, you ever see them hit a sled? They fucking I mean, it's like <sighs> springs and shit, nuts and bolts are falling out. I don't want them to hit my guy like that. So I'm going to do that. I can get this shoulder lower than I can get both shoulders. Okay? And I can keep my hands in a strong position. And I can come back at him. Okay, just like Floyd Mayweather. This is what he does. Go ahead. Hit me. Hit me. I'm looking for an opening. All I'm going to do is take a little step and look for an opening. Okay? And I'm going to come back. If you stay there, I come back. And I give you a chip. I get off my backer or we double team. Uh, if you come with me, I grab you. That's green light, isn't it? If you rock back, that's red light. I square up. Everybody's happy. I'm looking for loopers. I'm looking for run-throughs. I'm looking for blindside stuff. Everybody's happy. So we said green light, red light. Yellow light, that's where we shoulder roll. Now, what, what I found is I can shoulder roll on green light, too. It works fine. Thank you. Okay. Just how do, I, how do I keep from getting hit in the chest? If you get hit in the chest, you're dead. If you're stalemated. If you're stalemated, that's zero sum, you lose. End of story. I don't care what anybody says. All right, another question for you. Um, when is it when coach wants to use a spear and not a lever? Okay. Whenever you want to stay away from a guy or you, you're specifically trying to hit a guy in the hip, okay, we don't actually double team anymore. We don't, we don't do the shoulder-to-shoulder, hip-to-hip stuff because we 
shut each other off. Okay. I, we don't, you know, like we used to put the pad in between the hips and we'd walk the guy back and all that and high leg and the low leg and all this other shit. But you shut each other off. If the linebacker comes, you've got to get off. The other guys, he ain't getting on. It ain't happening. Okay. You can watch it a hundred times. You get good movement, but if that linebacker runs under, runs over, you got a problem. Okay. And you have to stay in those gallops and you're, you're, I'm shutting him off. He's shutting me off. Okay. So what we do is we, we only give helps. So if I am, if I'm trying to get to a spot, if I'm this, this guy right here, the right tackle, and I'm trying to get to, to that linebacker spot and I've got a defender that's two gap in my guard and we're all step up left foot. I'm going to go in there with my hands on his hip or maybe a shoulder and a hip. I want spears. Okay. If I have to move him by myself, okay, frontal, okay, I want strength. Right? I don't want length. Think about this. I mean, I, I tried to tell this to the guy, and he just didn't want to listen to me. Okay. Let's say this thing weighs um, four, 40 pounds. It doesn't. It weighs like two, two ounces. But if it, when it weighs 40 pounds, when I do that, Gravity is making maximum torque on this lever. Okay, it's it's the hardest position for me to hold. This is easier. This is easier. This is really just because I just shortened the lever. Okay, Nothing, the weight hasn't changed. I've traded length for strength. Okay, but when I need length, when I need to get in front of somebody who's not in front of me, okay. And I go in there short arm, I might not ever, you know, it depends on how he's playing. But if I can just pin him there, and then I can get him with the, with the strong arm. I call it the long arm and the strong arm. It mixed hands, we call it. Okay? Just like this. Okay? Here's the strong arm. We, we supinate to lock the elbow. Okay? The bicep, part of the function of the bicep, I don't know, I have biceps anymore is to supinate the arm. When you supinate, it locks it better than that. When you do reverse curls, it's not as strong as when you do regular curls, right? Okay. So when I want to be when I want to be strong, I want to supinate to a point. I, you know, I got a, I got a guy who approaches it like this, and I just keep telling him, no, it's, it's kind of like that. It's all it is. Okay, also supination gets the elbow in. Okay, so sometimes you want the elbow out. When we're when we're doing those hay hooks, those, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, hay bales. Woo! Okay, we want the elbow out. You don't want the elbow in. Why not? Okay. I'm gonna pull this elbow. Boom. Okay. So when you want strength, shorten up the lever. When you want length, length, length in the lever. If I'm just gonna shove this guy in the hip, okay, we call this a hammer. Okay. We don't actually strike him. We block it out and try to, uh, I used to use the word avalanche. We try to fall. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, did that answer your question? I think it does. All right. And then uh, Miles, question for you. Um, do you have any new wrinkles or thoughts on duo? Any new wrinkles or thoughts on duo? Well, in my own little brain, okay, I think that duo is run the best, the best versus a bubble. That's what we originally had designed it for, okay, was running it versus to a bubble defense where you, you got the shade so we could double the shade to the backside backer and read the front side linebacker. Okay, now you don't get many of those defenses up in, in Canada. You get a lot of the even front defenses. Okay, so the double takes place with the three technique to the first backer, and the center works back to the second guy. All right, the only, the only wrinkle that I would probably put in it, okay, yeah, would be I would add a tight end, okay, to it, okay. And then go from a tight end set and with the slot into the boundary, 
and run it that way. Okay, that may be the only, okay, other than that, most of the wrinkles will come with you guys up here with the motions and doing all that other stuff, okay? But don't try to, what's the word I want to use? Don't try to overcoach the play, okay? Get the two double teams and then let the back figure it out, okay? But the original design of the play was versus uh, an under defense or, an, or a 34 defense. And then I always coupled it with, not always, but most of the time I coupled it with a play we call twin. All right. So for six years at the Bears, we only ran it one way. We ran duo to the right and we ran twin to the left and we packaged both plays together. Okay. And if the backside guard could block down on the A-gap player, then we would rather run twin. Twin was pulling the tackle, okay, tight end based up, and the fullback always had the Sam. Wherever the Sam lined up, the fullback had that guy. So we made it real simple. If the front side guy was uncovered, one duo. Okay, if the backside guy could block down on the on the A-gap defender, right, then we would run twin. And for six years, we ran it one way, Okay, that was it. We didn't ever, I just say never, maybe I ran it to the left once or twice, but we were basically running it to the right. Okay, and for six years, it's finished in the top three plays in our run game. We didn't, we couldn't make it really more simple than that. Now, what we did with it is we had a duo where the tailback carried the ball. Okay, we had a duo where the fullback carried the ball. I mean, excuse me, we had a twin where the tailback carried the ball. We had a twin, okay, where the fullback carried the ball. We had a twin where one of the receivers would carry the ball, okay? And we had a twin with a quarterback. Like if we went to a bunch set, faked the toss, and the quarterback would come back out of it like a naked, right? He'd follow the tackle and be nobody there. So when we were running the twin that we put with the play, we would run it off a different, a lot of different formations. We could still run dual, but we could run twin back the other way. But what twin did we run? Did we run with the receiver? Did we run it with the tailback? Did we run it with the fullback? You know, we run it with the quarterback. That was a wrinkle for us in the dual play. That, that, that makes sense to anybody? Yep. Couldn't overcoach the play itself and try to get too fancy with it because it's a physical ass kick and play. And once you start trying to finesse it, it, it this never works right. Anybody else have any questions? You can go ahead and unmute. Ted, trying to unmute. No. <laughs> John, hell of a job, buddy. As usual. Hey. I, I I got a lot out of your deal. You know, just the, the what is that brain the, tonight? I didn't talk about it. <laughs> the spread the spread the cores, yeah. We we say uh uh you know what's the difference between uh, no what's what's the opposite of indifference? You don't give a fuck. You know, you don't hate me, you don't love me. At least when you hate me, you think about it. We say, to, hey, if a guy's screwing up, you got to get him, you got to be mean enough to tell him the truth. What drives me crazy sometimes, guys, is a lot of things drive me crazy, but kid makes a mistake on a football field. All of a sudden, the position coach is screaming at him, coordinator is screaming at the guy, the head coach is screaming at the guy. Don't you think that fucking kid is the first thing? He's the first guy who knows he made the mistake, right? Don't you think it's more important than you try to correct the mistake, fix it, and move on? You know, I, I know when I was at the Raiders, we would, if somebody made a mistake, we didn't stop it, okay? We did not stop it because you're not going to stop it in the game. You know, they hold Right, let's put this defender over here. That guy wasn't supposed to be here and, and run the play again. They're not going to do that. You know, you stop the game. Say, hey, hey, you're playing against Dick LeBeau. Hey, Dick, can you move the backside a little bit for us? 
Yeah, that's not going to fucking happen. Okay? So you're going to play the next play, right? Well, that's how we practiced it. Right? You screwed up. We screwed up. Get in the huddle. We're going to play the next play. you got to forget about that one. Okay? I, I, I agree. You know, you look, what do they say? On Excellence. Your, on your script. Okay? And then at the end of practice, we had a period five to seven weeks where we would fix all the mistakes. Okay, we would go back, right, and set that play up versus ourselves. Right, defense had their period, we had our period. Right, but it would be against ourselves, and we would take that coaching period to fix those mistakes because in the game, you're not going to stop and fix it. That ain't going to happen. I do that in practice. Right, just go to the next play, and you're going to fix them, you're going to fix them at the end of practice in your coaching period. Worked out pretty well. We broke nine Oakland Raider offensive records. Okay, nine Oakland Raider offensive records that year. Okay, and we were the second most productive offense in the history of the Oakland Raiders. Wow. Saying something. You gotta, they gotta, you gotta keep moving. You gotta keep going. Hey, yeah, and you're not gonna get perfect. You're not going to get it perfect. Don't don't even waste your time. <laughs> I remember the one time, John. No, it ain't happening. We cross. No, it's a, right? You know Peter Muldoon's the quarterback. We got Gil Finney and Peter Muldoon. They're a pretty good team. And so we had a check. We had a check versus where the nose guard was. Well, the nose guard lines up in the wrong spot where we didn't think he was going to be. So Peter Muldoon says, hey, you belong over here. And the nose guard moved. I said, you got to be <laughs> <laughs> Just how dumb can they be, right? <laughs> hey, Wiles, and, and you don't have to coach them on a bad snap, right? Because everybody else in the field will tell them. Say that again, Paul. You don't have to tell. You don't have to coach the center on a bad snap on shotgun because everybody else on the field knows how to coach that for you. Oh, every are you kidding? Yeah. You know how many line coaches there are in North America? There are millions. Actually, there's, there are millions of line coaches. And more. Everybody can coach the offensive line until they have to. Yeah. Once they uh, five man protection. Protect. It's like the coordinators. Well, I shouldn't you do five man protection? Fuck up. Protect the coordinator. Right? Just shut up. Let me coach blocking. the offensive line. You go do whatever you do over there. Most of the guys that tell you how to coach the offensive line have never played the game with their hand physically on the ground. They have never done that ever in their careers. So, but they're telling you how to coach you down there. Yeah, I think that just give me the fuck alone. Yeah. It's wherever you go. It doesn't matter what team you're on. It happens to all of us. But why is he doing that? Oh, and this is a great one. You're watching the film. Well, we practice it. We told him to him backwards. You're, you're watching. You're watching the film before. You're watching the film before you show it to the players or before you had a chance to talk to the player. And you're watching the film, and they always say this, well, why did he do that? I don't know why he did that. I haven't asked him yet. I haven't seen the kid. I, I, I know why I fucking did that. But you're going to get that. Why did he do that? Uh. <laughs> I've witnessed that line many times. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead and unmute. I uh, don't think there's anything else on uh, YouTube Live either with questions. So um, I know, Ted, you asked for uh, empty protections. And if you guys could think of any other topics you'd like, uh, just email me and I'll try and find the, uh, the coaches to talk about it. I'm sure uh, Strollo would jump on again. Now that he's a Zoom savvy guy, I'm sure he'd jump on again and, and talk Look. What? Empty, empty protection. protection. I'm going to give you one key to empty protection. Right? Block the five most dangerous guys. That's it. Whoever you think the five most dangerous guys are, block those guys and give the other guy to the quarterback. Well, what, what, I, what, what I was running into was many times we'd have in the five, depending on how they would line up, we'd have a half slide and a big duel on the other side. But I always wanted to know where the running back would release because then if I knew the back was running back, was in the quarterback's vision, number one, 
Number two, say he's going off to, to our left, then I would rather slide to the right. And then and on the big dual side, the quarterback could dump it to the running back. Where I ran into trouble when I couldn't coordinate it with a with a coordinator, he wouldn't tell me which side the back would release. <laughs> was it a fucking it secret? It happened a few times where the back would release to the field. I had asked the guys to slide to the field whenever it was not a base five-on-five five down call. And so now we're sliding to the field. The back's releasing to the field. The quarterback's looking to the field. And now we're getting that. Even though it's a big duel, I don't want to have the extra guy coming free if the quarterback what happens, can't it off. You're releasing the running back to the same side the center's going to, and that linebacker runs with the running back. You just yeah. – well, It's the backside guy that I was bothering. You know, yeah, you're, you're, you're saying two. you're wasting. You got three on two. You don't need it. You, you got well, three on two. Because the, the other guy's running with the with the with the. That was my problem, and I mean, I just don't. I, I looked. He wouldn't tell me. He says, "I can't tell you what." So I said, "You know what? I did do a quick statistics, and I noticed that the, he was mostly releasing to the to the boundary, the uh, back." So I told the guys, "Listen, if you've got a slide, you're sliding to the field. The other two are big dual backside." to the boundary and then if he has to dump it he's going to dump it to a back and uh, if that if that will was coming you know what I'm saying? Yeah, send him a mushroom shirt yeah. hey f- f- for the record he's not talking about me just for the record <laughs> oh that's awesome but there's a lot of 50s numbers right so you can do 50 51 where he free releases to the uh the side of the backs the, the back releases to the side where you got the big duel I, I agree. You know, like use the numbers. So yeah, I, we were using words. Words. we were using gone protection. One word. I guess we should have had a a field one and a boundary one, but he didn't want to have his uh, playbook uh, terminology. He just used uh, they had, they had to memorize the releases. So I had to have my old line memorize every route when which side the back was releasing. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just curious. Definitely gotta show him that the sack is because of the gone. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's, just, so hey, that's, you know, that's right there, Wild. That's what you need right there. Let them have it. Awesome. Any other <laughs> questions, guys? Cool shirt. Put up the cool shirt. All right, dude. Wait a second. It's just that when I put my bag on, it doesn't get it. Play. Oh, hey. I guess, fun. I'm getting too fucking big now. I watch them too much. I don't know, but it's. A, and every time I go out, kids look at me and they think I'm high on some dope. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, you you can't imagine over the course of the years that we've been doing it. John has spoken at it. There's a lot of guys that have spoken at it, uh, and and uh, uh, we it's in the it's, it's over ten thousand some odd numbers of the guys that we've helped. And and none of the guys that come to the clinic and speak get paid. Any money we make goes back into the clinic or goes for travel. It goes for any, anything that we can think of. You know, those shirts. You get, you get some nice you give some nice gifts, man. Right. So we we give back we give back to the profession that's been so good to us. Hey coach, you ever thought about having one on the West Coast, close to the West Coast? We, we we always people always ask me that you know what I mean, and we kind of put it where it is in Cincinnati because Cincinnati is it's almost in the middle of the country, you know what I mean. Indianapolis would be the perfect spot, but we never had anybody, you know. You could probably use Howard, okay. So, but we we kept it because Jimmy, back in eighty one or eighty two when we started it, okay, we were at Cincinnati. It was just a few guys, and we always and we always have it. There's a reason we always have it the third Friday and Saturday in May. So if you never know when it is, it's always the third Friday, Saturday in May. Because that was the best time for the guys that were recruiting or didn't have to recruit, or there was no – the spring sports were just about over. And so that was the best time that we could get the coaches in the spring to come to that. Okay? So we picked those two dates, and, you know, so – the guys that are on the West Coast, they they get there. We yeah, I, I know, yeah, I, I know. We get guys from forty three different states. 
43 Big different Canada. states. One year it was 43 different states in six different countries. They came from Brazil, Japan, Scotland, Canada, Austria. They were, it's crazy. You know, it's like a cult. Mm -hmm. They want to, they're looking for the first step. First two years I drove there, that was hell, man, from Canada, from Montreal, before flying in. You don't see the defensive line coaches doing that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you Coach, Wiley, Coach yep. Wiley, any news from uh, Coach Mudd? I heard that he uh, had an accident. Yeah, he's... Uh, he's What's he doing? Go. He's, right now, I just got a text from his... I sent it to the guys. Uh, uh, he he's in critical condition. Critical, critical condition in a, a Harborview Trauma Center in Seattle. Wow. Okay, he's fighting like hell, you know. But they're having a problem because they can't do the surgeries. They did one surgery, and then when they tried to do the second surgery, right, they couldn't get him in a position to do the surgery. Okay, and then it's then it be, he became unstable. Okay, and then uh, they found a blood clot. So now they're trying to dissolve the blood clot. And so using all different kind of medications to try to get them right. So yeah, the prayers our, are prayers, our prayers are with him. He, you know, that guy, he's helped me through my entire career. I've known the guy for 35 years. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, he was on our little, we have a little get together, you know, and he comes on Saturday afternoons with us. Okay, with our little get together sometimes. And then he, uh, you know, he was a, just a wonderful person to talk football with and a good person, you know. Uh, he likes to help people in the sport itself, you know. So a lot of us that have been around those guys, and most offensive line coaches are the same way. You know, we, we help guys out. We, uh, you know, it's one of the best rooms to be in, uh, you know. We kind of like offensive line coaches and offensive linemen you want as your next door neighbor. Those defensive guys, you want those fuckers to live across town someplace on the other side of the railroad tracks. Get on the other side over there. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's the nature of who we are, what we do. Okay. And it and you do you, you you pass that on to your players. Can you usually find that in your meeting room? You really don't have any bad offensive linemen. I mean, people. You know, you don't. Well, really, was it? Was it you? you don't really get many that? assholes in the offensive line room. I've been. Was it you that in the one of the clinics? At the, at the cool clinic. Was it you at the cool clinics that once said, "If I ever start a business, I'd hire nothing but offensive linemen, former offensive linemen." Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to play golf with a guy named Raj Johnson, who was a Canadian, by the way. He was. Bobby Orr's agent, but he ended up being one of the richest guys in, a, in, North, in, in really North America. He uh, became the CEO of American Express. He was the CEO of the, with a big takeover between R.J. Reynolds and, and the uh, Nabisco when he had that big CEO takeover. Uh, he was involved in all that stuff. Well, anyway, I used to go to golf school with Ross. And Ross would tell me, he said, because he was always my partner. We had to change. It was eight of us, and we had to change partners every day. So when he was my partner, he'd always tell me, he says, hey, when you get done coaching, he says, I'm going to give you a job. I said, Ross, I don't even know what you do. <laughs> hey, you know, he's got a guest. He's got homes on Jupiter Island, and his guest house is 8,000 square feet. That's his guest house. It's not his house. That's his guest house. Right? And so I, 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 he said, look, he said, anybody who works 100 hours a week, okay, we're going to train you what we want you to do, okay? Anybody that works 100 hours a week, okay, when you work 40, you're going to think that's a piece of cake. So when you get this side, you're done coaching, right? He said, you call me up. I'm going to give you a job. Huh? That's it. That's well, I'm still coaching. I'm going to be 70 years old. And Ross passed away a couple of years back. Right? So, yeah, but, you're the hook. you know, guy, the offensive line, I mean, those guys work forever. It doesn't matter. There's no time limit. There's nobody puts a clock on it. You know, you just work. You work until it gets done, and then you go home. Some days you get three hours of sleep. Some days you might get seven. They're very, very loyal. No, everybody is. My first job. My first job. I made twenty-two cents an hour when I first got a paycheck to coach football. 
right? And I was a junior high school football coach, right? My first job was a Pop Warner, but when I became a junior high school football coach, the stipend that the, the school department gave me for the hours I put into the job, I made 22 cents an hour. You don't get into the profession for the money. You don't do that. If you're in the profession for the money, okay, that's not, you're not gonna, you're gonna get fired. You're not gonna, you're gonna get fired anyway, but you're not, <laughs> you don't have the passion for the game. You got a passion for the game. That's why you're in the profession. Okay, the money, right, comes at the end of your career. That's when the money, like if you're in the National Football League, the money comes towards the end of it. Not, it doesn't come in the beginning, okay? It comes at the end of it, all right? So then, you know, that I really believe that the passion that I had for the game got me into the game of coaching. You know, it's like the players. You've got players. That's why I have, a, in my meeting room, I have a family board, and they bring in, Okay, the most important people in their life, and they put that picture up on the family board. I want them to see that every day they walk into the meeting room. I want them to see those pictures. Okay, and then on the other side of the room, I get a board that says in the beginning, and they have to bring in pictures of when they played in Pop Warner Junior High School, high school, because that's when they played and they didn't get paid. <clears throat> they didn't get paid to play. Okay? Well, maybe some of the Catholic schools may have paid them, but that's another story. <laughs> You know, so the, but they didn't get paid to play. They played because they had a passion to play the game. And they liked playing football. And yeah. then they went on, somebody told them, hey, you're pretty good. We're going to give you a scholarship to play in college. So then they moved on to college. And they played because they really still liked the game. They got a scholarship. And then somebody said, hey, you may be pretty enough to get drafted. And somebody got drafted, and they put him in the seats. And once you get one of those seats, you don't want to give it up. So you need to do whatever you need to do to keep that seat. Right. You need to do whatever you need to do. That's not, not my job for you to keep the seat. That's your job to keep the seat. Okay? And I tell them, look, whether you're a first-round draft pick or if I sign you as a free agent, it doesn't matter. Okay? you got a seat. Now, how are you going to keep it? Okay? How are you going to keep it? Because there ain't too many of those seats that people are going to sit in. So... My spiel on that shit. <laughs> Any other questions? Got That's my bedtime. Thank you. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Wild. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank All you right, gentlemen. Have a great night. Nice Thanks course. for joining me. Take care. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you guys. So the Thank next you. best thing, the next best thing to be called dad is to be called coach. Remember that, guys. The next best thing to be called that is to be called coach. All right. So, have a good night, gentlemen. Thank you good for night, your time. God bless. All right. Here you go. Bless.